All right, so now we're going to look at combining transformations, and we're going to look at the function x squared. And um, so we can come up with a table of values for x and f of x, right? So I'm just going to put in some values. Um, some logical values would be something like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, right? Because x squared is symmetric about the y-axis, so we'll just choose some values on either side of the y-axis. And then we'll just square them, right? Square negative 2, you're going to get positive 4. Square negative 1, you get 1, 0, 1, and 4. All right? So there's our um, the values of our function. So now we're going to look at combining some of these um, stretches and compressions and see whether, let's see if we can find some logic in how these, how these um, combinations work. All right. So for this next function, we're doing the um, f of 1 half x plus 1. All right. So um, 1 half x plus 1 is my input. So I want 1 half x plus 1 to be the values that are good inputs for <laughs> f, for the function f, right, for x squared. So I'm just going to use the same inputs, right? But now um, these values are values of 1 half x plus 1. All right, and the outputs will be the same. So, one four zero one four. Right. If I put, if I put negative two into the function f, I get four. Right. But the the issue is that now the input is one half x plus one, and I want one half x plus one to be negative two. All right. So I could set up a little equation: one half x plus one equals negative two, and solve that. Right. I can subtract one from both sides. I get um, you know, one half x uh, equals um, negative three, right? Subtracting one from both sides, and then I need to multiply both sides by two. So I'm going to get x is equal to negative six, all right? So I'm just going to do that for each one. I know I'm just going to solve the equation one half x plus one equals negative one, and I got negative four. One half x plus one equals zero. I got x equals negative 2, right? 1 half x plus 1 equals 1, then x equals 0, and when 1 half x plus 1 is 2, then x has to be 2, all right? So now I have some values for the um, f of 1 half x plus 1, where f is x squared, okay? So uh, before you go any further, let's go ahead and just graph these things. We want to graph um, we want to graph f of x. So let's start with that. Let's go ahead and graph f of x. All right, that's pretty simple. It's just x squared. So 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And then when we square the negative side over here, we get the same thing. So we have this nice little symmetric graph about the y-axis. And I'm just going to connect these dots to draw the graph of x squared. f of x equals x squared. Now this keeps going, right? Uh, I just don't have room on my graph to graph any more of it, but it does keep going. All right, so now um, let's use blue. Um, I should have probably written these values in blue. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to graph this in blue, and I'm just going to use the x values that I found. Um, that would give me the same uh, inputs to the x squared function, all right? So um, when x is negative 6, right, then uh, f of 1 half x plus 1 is 4. So I have this point on the graph. x is negative 4, I get 1. All right, I'm just plotting the points that I found in this table. Negative 2 is 0. 0 is 1, and um, then 2 is 4. 2 is 4. Okay, so that corresponds with that point. So let me connect those up. See if I can do that and make it look decent. And there you go. All right, and again, it keeps going. So I can draw the little arrows, but... Um, all right, so what just happened there? We had f of 1 half x plus 1. Now, when you see that plus 1, you think, oh, that's a shift to the left, right? 
Um, and it seems like it would be a shift to the left by one, but that's not what we're getting. So you have to be, that's why you have to be careful about these transformations because sometimes you look at it and think, okay, why isn't that just shifted by one? Why is it shifted by two to the left? Um, now the one half X gives us what we expected. We got that, that stretch. We got that horizontal stretch by a factor of two, right? So that's kind of expected, but okay, why did we get the negative? Why is it only, sh why is it shifted to the left by two and not, not one? All right. So now let's look at this other one. All right. So now the input to our function is one half times the whole quantity X plus one. All right. So again, I'm, I'm just going to use, let's see, maybe I'll do this one in red. I'm going to use the same input values that I did before, right? It's just that now the input of the function is, is one half of the quantity X plus one. And if we put those values into F, we're going to get the same output values. All right. So now we just have to figure out, okay, if the input is one half X, uh, one half of the quantity X plus one, right? I'll write it down here. One half X plus one, oops. And that's equal to negative two, then what is X? All right, so we have to solve this. So X plus one is equal to negative four, just multiplying both sides by two. And then we're going to subtract one from both sides. So X is equal to negative five, negative five. All right. So we're going to do that for each one of these. I'm just going to set one half X or sorry, one half times the quantity X plus one, whole quantity X plus one. I'm going to solve for X. I'm going to find the X value that gives, um, this input. All right. So, um, I got negative three, I got negative one, I got one and I got three. All right. So, um, you can verify that when I, when I put three in for X, then, uh, three plus one is four, take half of that and it's two. So these, these will work. They give you the inputs that we want because we know the outputs for those inputs. So now let's plot those points. We have negative five, um, four, right? Negative five, four is here. Uh, negative three, one is here. Negative one, um, zero. And then we have one, one, which cor corresponds with that point. And then we have uh, three comma four. All right, so now this is the graph. This is the graph of F of one half times the quantity X plus one. All right. So now you're see you can see that we're getting the shift that we expect. Right, we're getting the shift to the left by one and we're getting the stretch by a half. Okay, so um, that's kind of the key for dealing with these uh, when you have multiple, um, multiple transformations um, inside, you know, on the inside, on the, uh, to the input of the function, right? So we've got these inside changes that are causing um, uh, horizontal shifts and horizontal stretches and compressions, right? We put them together and, um, and the key is to, uh, you see how we could, if we factored out the one half up here, like if I was, if I were to write this as, actually, let me just do it in blue so it matches. Um, if I were to rewrite this as F of one half times the quantity, right? Factor the one half out of the X, one half X plus one plus <laughs> one half X plus one, right? I factor the one half, I would get X plus two, right? And then you can see why you're getting a shift to the left by two, right? <laughs> so that's kind of the key. Um, let's see, what do we have to do here? All right, we got to describe the transformations here. So the first one, what we saw was a um, horizontal, horizontal um, stretch by a factor of two and it's a, 
uh, it's it's shifted left oops, and shifted left by two. Okay, so those are our transformations to this function. And it's easier to see if we write this as f of one half times the quantity x plus two. Right, that's the same thing. If I distributed that one half, I would get one half x plus one, right? But now you can see why we're getting the shift to the left by two. All right, and let's describe the transformations for this other one. Okay, I'll, I'll use red since I drew it in red. Um, this one was a um, horizontal stretch. Horizontal stretch by a factor of 2, right? And this one is shifted, shifted um, to the left by 1. All right. So, um, the takeaway from this is that um, the order of these shifts matter and um, also that we need to factor if we have multiple shifts to the input we need to factor the uh, if we have a coefficient on x we need to factor that out and so there's a summary here in this little table so um, if you have a graph, uh, if you have uh, a, a function f of x and you're doing a combination of transformations on it, right? So this, this factor a, let me change it back to green. This factor a, what does that do to it? It's, it's, a, um, it's, it's an outside change, right? So it is a... Um, this results in a uh, vertical, vertical stretch or compression, right? Um, this B results in a horizontal, horizontal stretch or compression, All right? The H is a horizontal, horizontal. Um, shift, right? And the K gives you a vertical shift. All right? So this is sort of the general form of a, of a, of a, this, of a combination of transformations. And so, um, and we have to do it in this order. All right? So, um, when we have a function like that, it means it's it's stretched um, it's uh, stretched horizontally by a factor of one over b, right? Um, if b happens to be negative, we we'll just take the absolute value of it. If it's less than less than zero, it would be reflected across the y-axis. Um, it's shifted um, by h units horizontally. Okay, so left or right. It's stretched or compressed by a factor of a, right? And again, if a if a is less than zero, then it's also a, it has a reflection across the x-axis. And then um, the ver it has a vertical shift of k units up or down. All right. So, phew, that's a lot. <laughs> All right. So, but um, when you're when you're um, when you're describing the transformations to a function, you need to look at them in this order when you to describe them. So, all right, well, let's, let's go ahead and look at the next example, and I'll meet you in the next video for that.